A High Court ruling in Abia State on Wednesday says the abduction and forceful return of Nambi Kanu to Nigeria was illegal under local and international law. We we'll take a look at the merits of the ruling and the legal implications, among others. Also on the breakfast, away from Abia State, we look at the controversy surrounding the proposed removal of fuel subsidy by 2022. Should the Nigerian government remove fuel subsidy or not? And also don't forget, we'll be looking, going through today's national dailies and analyzing the biggest stories on the pages of the newspapers. Welcome to The Breakfast Time, Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to be back on your screen this beautiful morning. It's going to be an amazing time of having great conversation. Two hours straight up. And this morning, uh, top on the discussion would be the unlawful arrest of Namdi Kanu. We'll also be looking at the issue of fuel subsidy removal. Should the federal government consider, you know, the removal of fuel subsidy? There's a lot of back and forth with all of that, saying uh, the president did not direct the removal of fuel subsidy. Yes, and uh, yes, it caused a lot of concern because Nigeria is already anticipating the removal of, sub sub of fuel subsidy uh, come the second quarter of 2022. It's been put out. But we would definitely going to take a look at all of that we'll dive right in we'll dive right in lots of uncertainty but let's uh, uh go straight to our top trending stories today mercy uh 2023 is, is getting closer can you can you feel the heat no i can't feel you it. can't feel the heat no, feeling don't allow it. the aces in the studio to see you <laughs> <laughs> you know but the 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 conversation surrounding 2023 is, is picking up and of course you know the uh, presidential candidates who are uh, potential presidential candidates as parents are coming out um, to declare the intention. Um, it seems like uh, one of them, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, um, uh, he he opened the the, the 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 nest as it were, and they're offline now. We'll look at that. But one of the uh, stories trending, of course, Nigeria um, having a hundred percent record at the ongoing African Cup of Nations uh, in their group. You know, nine points from three matches. It's it's. Um, it's good for a lot of Nigerians. I know you're a Liverpool fan. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Liverpool fan. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> I got Messi right there. You know, but 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 I mean, people weren't sure. Football fans from Nigeria weren't sure what to expect from the Super Eagles. Um, uh, you know, going to the tournament, the the coach was fired. Get her so, so I, I know that then, you, uh, Wally Scotts, our sports presenter and analyst and journalist here, has been very sure about the team, especially with the likes of Austin Aguavor being, you know, coaching the guys. So yeah. he he has this confidence, and I can actually see that a lot of people have been very impressed with you know the performance of the Super Ego, and some people think that this is the best after a very very long time. While you have other coaches saying, hey, as much as this sounds very brilliant, yes is okay some of the teams that we have actually played with as not as good as they i mean they should be when you begin to compare the likes of um i mean but who would even think that ghana would leave i'm sorry yeah 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 but you but, know you know you know because yeah it's, I'm, it's, I'm, it's, I'm serious um, who would think that ghana would leave because <laughs> it, it, it was it was it was um it was uh a humbling defeat for, for uh, the black stars against gomorrah's you know but since we're talking about the super eagles you know, let's um, let's look at the highlights of uh, Swaggles two nil defeat of Guinea Bissau um, yesterday in Cameroon. Um, I think they're in Garoa, and so that's where the Eagles have been so far. They remain in Garoa going forward. Um, let's go to the highlights. What a time to be alive! <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um, uh, yesterday Nigerians were really, really elated, but you know, of course, people can't fail to drag you on social media. Um, so I was wondering, Okocha was trending, you know, I was asking, why is Okocha trending? He's not playing for the Super Eagles. Um, it turns out people, this insinuation that uh, Moses Simon, who's a dribble, we saw that that led to the second goal. Um, you know, there was this speculation that he's uh, Okocha's cousin, you know, so that was, that was I think, what was... Um, Making it happen. Yeah. But seriously, the performance, I mean, it just brings back the memories of the likes of, yeah. you know, Kocher, yeah. the likes yeah. of Khan in one core, Absolutely. and what have you. So it, it's really good. I mean, that's why I'm beaming with so much smile this morning. It feels really great. One yeah. thing that unites us as a country is football. We don't really Abs care Absolutely. Where, whether we're from the north, south, but, east, but, or but west. But talking about, <laughs> about caring whether we're north, south, east, or west, um, you know, the guy who scored Nigeria's first goal, 
Umar Sadiq. He's um, let's say the, the the strikers have not been firing. You know, they put in um, uh, Awuni in the first two games. He wasn't really firing. You know, doing delivering. Mm -hmm. um, Sadiq came in second half of the second game and then started this game. Um, he wasn't really playing to you know uh, the expectations of Nigerian fans and people went online to drag him he's too tall for football you know and then they started saying things like uh, um, Sadiq is uh, President Buhari's um, uh, uh, what's the name <laughs> slot <laughs> it's a, you know this situation that okay it's so all for national interest federal character you know the north south east west thing was obia so you have to put people from different tribes in there you know um so the fans some of the fans are saying that uh, you know awani is not really delivering put someone else there you understand um you have one other guy who is from the southeast no southwest anyway so 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 they were saying um awani is uh, the vice president of sheba's slot yeah. while well, sadik is Bari slot <laughs> that's why they're playing them you know so it's funny it was funny um uh, nice one uh, it will be also had a bit of like a a moment where he tried to do a Ronaldinho kind of um uh, yeah you know that ball where the ball comes on top of you and you try to use your back of a leg to hold the ball and it went really horrible you know and Nigerians could not even forgive the young man no you but, know, but that's they, always the case for, this, for, for Nigerians yeah. when you get it you know they come for you come I mean on. all of the appraisals but when you don't get it yeah, they yeah. also come against it you it was but like they were like um is uh it will be truly your coach's uh, cousin <laughs> no most someone is a real one <laughs> You know, I, I can see all of that, uh, but however, it's, it's, you want to look at it, it's been very impressive. Yeah, very but I don't think that it's time for you know the Super Eagles to relax, especially now that you have to move to the next round. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. They need to you know double up the effort, dribbling, defense, you know, attack. And You're feeling good, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, a coach has he not done well? What can we say no, about the no, coach? No, he has. Local I mean, because coach. we're talking about. Yeah. No, to some extent, mm. we need to give him some credit. Mm. Usually, we're always great about our weaknesses, and then mm -hmm. we don't get to talk about our strength. And so far, we've seen the boys actually deliver very well. And when you want to attribute, because the argument will always be, who takes the credit if the boys are playing well, if the country yeah. is doing well, the coach should take the cre credit. And some persons have argued, like I would say, Wallace Scott have always argued that, you know, Eguavo has, you know, this, he understands the boys. I mean, this is Nigeria. And that's why a lot of people will always agitate that we should have, you know, Nigerians coaching the team yeah. Yeah. because you understand the play the wing play is what he's been doing so far we've seen you know great performance but we're saying that there's a lot of work that needs to be done but however we're plus <laughs> <laughs> you know but, but i mean for, for the Ghanaians who fired a local mm. um coach and then appointed a european and he couldn't deliver you know uh, i think they can they learn could, from they, they could be taking from the, the big brother Africa, yeah they, they brother can learn Africa from Nigeria. they can learn from they could be learning from us okay okay <laughs> I, I won't fight you on this <laughs> let's move on okay so moving on um let's also look at another top trending conversation uh we're looking at the issue where uh the aspirant who was actually declared he's declared in his intention to um not nigerians but to the president talking about Asiwa Drew Ahmed Tunubu is saying uh, that the PVCs has actually expired. That's what he said, right? And so you have this response from INEC, you know, replying. Now, one of the first things uh, or the things that came to my mind when I saw the stories, does he, is he INEC, is he the INEC boss or the chairman? What yeah. jurisdiction? It, it, what are the concerns? It's, 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 I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. But you know, but politicians say these things. I also had, had the same question in my mind. What's your play? Mm. What's your play what's here? Really, what's really your business in yeah. all of this? And why do you have to speak up now? You know. So I feel like with our politicians and those who have to, uh, you know, for those who have to actually vie for political yeah. office, they always want to show themselves just a few days before the elections yeah uh, so they come up with a lot of interesting conversation and, and well I, I hear we have a, a, um, a footage to look at so we'll look at this and then we'll come back and talk some more about this development take one family member two family members knock on all doors and make sure that that new registration because they, they may not announce to you on time the PPC you have has expired. Yes. 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 I look at it closely. 
and you look at other elections being held, you see that it's diminishing because those cards expired. And they didn't. It's mandatory that you go and register and you're able to vote and achieve your aspirations. Yes. May God bless you and bless Nigeria. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Mercy. Um, it's, it's quite interesting <laughs> times. Um, in uh, it'll be expected we see some of these gaffes, you know, you can call it a, it's a gaff actually, um, to say what, what you're not sure about as a presidential aspirant, uh, something as important as the PVCs. Um, many media outlets did fact check immediately this video came out and, um, you know, reached out to INEC. And, uh, of course, uh, in a message obtained from INEC website, the uh, uh, chairman of the commission said registered voters, this is one of the fact check sites, you know, said registered voters could renew their PVCs in the continuous voter registration exercise if the cards were missing or defaced. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's quite, quite interesting. Um, also, uh, the chief press secretary to the INEC chairman, his name is uh, Rotimi Oyekami, was reached. And his response was that the PVC is valid as long as it is not defaced. He also said that double registration is an offense on the law. So, so um, of course, now with Nigerians, we want to see that, oh, okay, this is not the, the, the fact, you know, of the, of the matter. So, uh, so I'm thinking that if you're a presidential aspirant, you should just pay attention to your manifesto, pay attention to what your policies are. Just same yesterday, we saw the news where also... Bolak Matinibu said he was going to pay, I mean, it was ascribed to him that statement that he would be taking care of the uh, school fees or mm. registration fee for those who were sitting for that examination. But that, that's that a, manifest, a manifesto issue. No, though. but how, okay. how is that, seriously, how, how is that really, we, you, you have to look at Nigeria. I, I'm thinking for everyone, maybe, you know, uh, you should take this for free. You should look at what the problems are. The problems that we're currently faced with and think of how to solve the problem. Now, one of the major problems of this country is security. Security is a major challenge. I know how many business... Yesterday, I was on the phone with a friend and he told me how his business actually crumbled. The transportation business crumbled in the north because of the, you know, Boko Haram activities and the e-swap. So what, what, what are we saying? So if you are a presidential aspirant or you be, intend to become a president in this country, your attention should be on what you, how you're going to solve the problems of Nigeria. The issue of some um, parts of the region saying they want to disintegrate. Mm. So unity is also another concern. What is causing all of that? People feel that resources are not looking properly yeah. this should be your concern allow the um, you know the institution that saddled with the responsibility backed by law which is INEC to go ahead and make those statements but, but, let's not begin to jump the guns and move from you know pillar yeah. to pose and yeah. say the things even if you have that information mm -hmm. is it within your purview to go ahead and make those declarations and, and, and another, another aspect people are on you know are responding or reacting to is, is the fact that um, he does not even know that PVCs do not expire, you know. And um, if, if you want to be the president of Nigeria, um, at this point, you should be able to know. Is it that he's not informed? Is it that it's an age thing? You know, I don't know. People are asking these questions. No, but, but, you, but you would actually save yourself the whole trouble if you understand that this is not within your jurisdiction. There are some things that you, you're not, it's not your concern. You could mm. probably say it. And if you think that you but, have concerns. But, but, but let's see, let's see. Even if it's not within your jurisdiction, if you are informed, and if you're on top of the situation, you'll be okay, making so, so such that's another wahala. Yeah, that, that, that is, you know, people are asking, I mean, this is what I saw, mm. you know, is he in the right frame of mind? Does he have his, is he well, um, is he, you know, on top of things, you know, and of course, uh, you know, recent experience will make people afraid that, you know, we get someone in, in, in the leadership of the country who may not necessarily be on top of things. You know, people will say, oh, there's fuel subsidy, there's no fuel subsidy because two things are coming out at the same time. So they want a president or at least presidential candidates who are on top of things, know, have their facts and know what's happening, you know. But, but let's give it to Tinubu. Um, uh, Ashiwajo has come out to say, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, he apologized. No, and, apologized. and Niger I'm sure Nigerians will take that. Yes. Uh, usually, he if said, you I'm come sorry. out to apologize, mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing to understand that okay. uh, uh, you have made a mistake and mm -hmm. you accept that. We so hope that will be the last sure. one. But anyway, talking about the um, his promise to pay the WAIC fees of uh, of Nigerian students, let's just roll the tape and listen to Ashiwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu again. Your, your children's West Africa examination fee 
is paid by us. Yes. So that no one, no matter how poor, is left behind. The symbol of our party is broom. The symbol of my cap is breaking shackles of poverty. You break the shackle of poverty. You break the shackle of ignorance. You broke the party and the shackle of lending. We need stability in the country. We need peace. Peace. And stoppage of banditry is extremely important because women are the first victims, the most vulnerable victims of banditry, violence, and instability. And without peace and stability, we cannot build the nation as rapid as we want. APC is progressing. And that is where you should stay. That is where you should mobilize. And of course, you've heard from the presidential aspirant. Uh, was it, Nigerians are still hoping that he would make his uh, intentions known to Nigerians. But the fact that you make your intention known to the president, Nigerians have already had. But however, uh, he would come to us somehow. I mean, I, I, I had this conversation on radio some time ago. <laughs> and I mean, people are saying, oh, yeah, he has not yet told. But, 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 but the fact that you tell the president <laughs> means <laughs> you have told Nigerians. And, you know. I, I mean, because it's not like you whispered to the president and, yeah. you know, just went to his room and whispered to him. Him. You there came and announced it. Yeah, yeah, you announced it. It was in the public. You had media presence and all of that. And of course, that has trapped. But that's not the point here. But well, my concern promise, yeah. here is um, how does that solve the problem? This promising to pay. Pay school. How does that um, solve the, How does that fix the problem? Is that the problem? He, that, he didn't just say that. He said he would um, break his shackles of poverty. How does he intend? You know, these are the questions. And I'm hoping that we're ready for 2023. That 2023 would not be another 2019, 2015 where. See, I, I feel that as a country, it's time that we wake up and begin to ask for accountability. When somebody says, I will give you 100 million, the question is how, when, where? We need to begin to state, so you don't just wake up and make promises. Do we trust the capacity of these persons who are making this? Now, we know that, yes, I, if you look at, uh, you know, the personality involved here, he has a lot of structures. I mean, his structure... Uh, you know that he has structures. Give it to him. He has been in the system for a very long time. But it just it, it goes beyond just waking up and making all of this pronouncement. I rather think that the issue of education, we look at the structure from the root, addressing it. Why don't we empower the parents, make the environment conducive? Or Absolutely. people, you know, let people so, so be able was that, to... was asking on, 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 on Facebook, you know, saying um, um, some parents don't even have children in school. To start with so how would their fees be paid and these are the issues the country is is facing um but one that caught, got me laughing was someone saying that uh, in this century a presidential aspirant will be talking about paying work fees and he said affliction will not rise a second time in nigeria that's quoting um it's a very portion of scripture you know but these are interesting things but mercy you've raised fantastic questions fantastic i give it to you Fant don't tell us and uh, you know it's it's but the thing about this this grammar you're speaking how many million or percentage of the voting public can ask such intelligent questions of the aspirants or the candidates when they come? So, it, so it, it means that there's a lot of work to be done. You have civil society organization. You have the electoral. I mean, you have political parties. Media. Uh, you have the media. A lot of sensitization needs to be carried out. It All goes right. beyond. People need to understand the question because. You know, we need to move on. We away. need to move on. <laughs> we need to move on. We'll be seeing more of this. Anyway, uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, what the papers have for us with uh, public affairs analyst Ezekiel in your air talk up next, right here, of the press on the breakfast. <laughs>